The once mighty Roman Empire, which had ruled the world, was now tottering, and while the second judgment was still raging by King Genesaric of the Vandals, there came the sounding of the next trumpet judgment against the river valleys of the Alpine regions. Revelation 8 verses 10 and 11 say, And the third angel sounded. And there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers, and upon the mountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And many men died of the waters, because they were made bitter. As we have already seen, stars represent ruling powers and authorities of this world. And the word heaven is not speaking of Yahuwah's throne, but again, it is speaking about the political realm of authority over the kingdoms of the Roman Empire, which are ruled by the prince of this world, Satan. Therefore, a great star that is burning with fire would represent a mighty evil leader coming on the stage of world history that would cause great bitterness, misery, death, and destruction. Now the word fire has been used in the first three trumpet judgments, which is a code word for disaster. And in the first trumpet judgment, it is associated with hail mingled with blood, which is thrown to the earth. In the second trumpet judgment, fire is associated with a mountain cast into the sea. And here, the third trumpet, fire, is associated with a star. The use of fire in all three of these remind me of Luke 12, verse 49 and 51, where Yeshua says, I am come to send fire on the earth. He's not talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, for he goes on to explain, You suppose that I am come to give peace on earth? I tell you no, but rather division. Yeshua confirms that he is the one behind the fire of destructive judgment that is thrown on the earth. And what that means is basically those who reject him or pervert his message on them will come judgments, conflicts, divisions, wars, and persecutions until they either repent or are destroyed. The command to throw fire from the altar to the earth is also given by Yahuwah to punish men's apostasy and their rejection of his call to repentance in Ezekiel 9, where Yahuwah commands the angel to go in between the wheels, even under the cherubim, and fill your hand with coals of fire from between the cherubim and scatter them over the city and as for me also my eye shall not spare neither will I have pity but I will recompense their way on their head I could go on and on these are all code words about judgment of destruction upon the wicked who reject father his Torah and his son Yeshua the Messiah and pervert righteousness all these judgments are designed by father to bring repentance so who was this mighty evil leader referred to as a star falling from heaven that would bring wormwood or bitterness to the Roman earth and that is exactly what the word wormwood means is bitterness in Lamentations 315 and 319 so if the Goths brought judgment on the land in the first trumpet judgment and the vandals brought judgment upon the sea and the land in the second trumpet judgment, then we are looking for a leader of a nation who would bring further destruction during this exact time in history to the Western Roman Empire. And history records that just such a leader came on the scene and fulfilled this prophecy perfectly. His name was Attila the Hun who brought destruction to the river valleys of the Alpine regions of the Empire of Rome. Attila ruled over a territory bordered by the Danube, the Volga, and the Baltic that was a mountainous region which has over 70 known rivers. Historians describe Attila as being deformed in appearance, yet he must have appeared subhuman because he was invincible in 
battle and earned the title, the Scourge of God. The Huns began their attack against Rome in 433 AD and attacked along the rivers Rhine, the Danube, and the Po. By estimates, over one-third of all the rivers ran with blood and over 300,000 men's dead bodies were thrown into the rivers to purposely poison the waters and cause many more deaths by people who would drink the water from these bitter rivers. The Huns, whose name has endured to this very day as a symbol of terror, were among the fiercest of all the barbarians who swept into the northern region of Europe at that time. His forces advanced through the Alps into northern Italy in 452 AD, sacking the cities of Padua, Verona, Milan, and Turin, devastating all of northern Italy. Not only did his armies bring bloodshed, but famine and pestilence in their wake. Attila reached the very gates of Rome before being persuaded to turn back by the appeals of Pope Leo to spare the city, who met Attila at the very gates. With the subsequent death of Attila the very next year, the empire of the Huns began to collapse after 453 AD. But while the rivers of life, both literal and spiritual, turned into poison because of the dead bodies which were being thrown into the rivers, and spiritually, because of the apostate poison doctrines and traditions of men being practiced by the Roman Catholic Church and their citizens of Rome. All the while, the true eternal fountains of living water was being offered then as it is now today to all those who thirst to come and follow Yeshua, the Messiah. I am reminded of the verse in Jeremiah 2.13 which says, My people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountains of living water, and hewn out for themselves cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. From 313 A.D. and into the 6th century, for over 200 years, Yahuwah called to the people of Rome to repent by inflicting them with destruction and chastening of the trumpet judgments and to come to the fountain of living waters in Yeshua, or they would be completely destroyed. Unfortunately, as we shall see, Rome did not repent, but will prefer foreign apostasy state waters to Yeshua's living waters of eternal life. Only one more final barbarian onslaught would be needed to bring down imperial Rome in the west, which was now a mere shadow of its former self in power. I'm Bill Sanford, trying to put the book of Revelation in proper perspective in our day.